Welcome to NHP's NTU module on surge protection devices. Here we're going to take a look at what is an electrical surge and the sources of surges on a network. We'll then take a look at how a surge protection device or SPD operates and its characteristics to the standard IEC 61643. We'll finish off by having a look at a selection guide to guide you on how to choose the best SPD for your installation. So firstly, let's define what is a surge. A surge is a spike in voltage, generally in the kilovolt or tens of kilovolt range, for a very short period of time in the microseconds. The problem with this is that even though it's a very short period of time, that high voltage can cause damage to electrical insulation and sensitive electronic equipment. So where do these surges come from? Well, the most obvious, and certainly the most destructive, is lightning. In this case, the building is protected by a lightning rod that conducts the lightning energy down to earth. The problem that causes is that it raises the local potential of the earth above the system voltage. Hence, a surge actually enters via the earth and causes damage. The most common type of surge seen on a network comes from switching of capacitive and inductive loads. Things like DOL starters, welders, switching of capacitive banks, electrical accidents on the network can all cause a spike in voltage. Also from things like cloud to cloud lightning. Now no two surge events are going to be exactly identical. Each surge is going to differ in magnitude and duration. However, so that we can test and compare different SPDs, uh, we need to simulate these two events. So in IEC 61643, a lightning event is classed as a type 1, and that is simulated by a 10 over 350 microsecond waveform, whereas the more common inductive type surge is a type 2 and that's simulated by an 8 over 20 microsecond waveform. Now I'm not going to get too technical on this but just note that the type 1 has a lot longer duration therefore it has a lot higher energy. So let's take a look at uh, the operation of an SPD. Now in the ideal world an SPD would simply be a switch to earth that is installed in parallel with the sensitive load. Under normal conditions, uh, that switch would be open, therefore the mains voltage would be seen by our equipment. And then under surge events, so when the, the SPD sees a high voltage, it closes that switch and conducts that spike in energy down to earth, and all our sensitive equipment sees is the mains voltage. However, unfortunately, in the real world, we have some limitations. Under high voltage conditions, the SPD will modify its impedance down to almost zero. However, there's no such thing as a perfect conductor, so there will be some resistance present. Combining that with surge current that's in the kiloamps, we'll be left with a residual voltage across the SPD. And the aim of a surge protection device is to keep that residual voltage below the withstand of our protected load. So keeping that in mind, let's have a look at some characteristics of SPDs according to IEC 61643. To do this, I'll be using the example seen on the screen here with the characteristics on the left hand side. Now at the top we've got T1 plus T2. That means that this SPD is designed and tested for both type 1, the conductive lightning surge events, and also type 2, the inductive surge events. It has a UC, or continuous operating voltage, of 275 volts. So this is the point at which the SPD modifies its resistance down to zero to divert the high voltage. For the following characteristics, I'll be explaining those over the next few slides. IN is the nominal current rating of an SPD. 
Um, there is a test procedure with this, but if I can summarize, it basically means that the SPD can be tested to this current 15 times and the SPD itself survives. Uh, note with this, this is an 8 over 20 microsecond waveform, so this is a type 2 test. UP is the voltage protection level. This essentially is the residual voltage that is left over an SPD when it's tested at its nominal uh, current rating. So in our example, the SPD had a IN nominal current rating of 25 kA and a voltage protection level UP of less than or equal to 1.5 kV. So when the SPD sees a surge of 25 kA, you know that the residual voltage is going to be less than or equal to 1.5 kV. Uh, essentially, this is the most important factor when looking at protecting our loads. A note on this point is UL1449 being the North American standard for surge protection devices. It has a similar unit called VPR. The point that differs here is that this is tested at 3kA, not at IN. Therefore, its values generally a lot less, generally less than or equal to around the 800 volt mark. So on paper, that looks more impressive. However, it is a different test. IMAX is the maximum discharge current. This is the largest one-time test current that a SPD can survive. It's always a lot larger than the nominal current because this time it only needs to survive one hit, whereas nominal current needs to survive 15 hits. A point to note with this is that though it's a good gauge to compare between different SPDs, it doesn't actually tell us anything about our protection of our load. It's because the residual voltage will be higher than UP, the voltage protection level. IMP is the lightning impulse current. Again, this is the largest test current that a SPD can survive one time. The difference here is that this is with the 10 over 350 microsecond waveform. So this is for our type 1 devices where we're protecting from lightning. Before moving on to the selection guide, I wanted to answer the question as to whether we always need to install a neutral earth pole on our SPDs. As previously discussed, under surge conditions, our SPDs modify their impedance almost to zero. That provides a path for that surge energy down to earth. However, if we're close to an MEN link, we already have a path from the neutral to the earth, and hence, under surge conditions, that fourth pole is redundant. That's also backed up by ASNZS 1768. So in that case, we only need to install a three pole device. So let's move on and take a look at our selection guide. We're going to start by looking at the main switchboard because this will be the point of entry of supply. Firstly, does the building have an external lightning protection, i.e. a lightning rod? If it does, this is seen by IEC 61643 as the worst case scenario. This is because the lightning rod not only increases the likelihood of a lightning strike, but it also means that uh, the energy dissipated by that lightning will be very close to our installation. In this case, the standard recommends a Type 1 plus 2 device with a lightning impulse current of 25 kA. Here, NHP recommends using the PSC 25 kA range. This has an impulsional current of 25 kA, a maximum current of 100 kA, a nominal current of 25 kA and a voltage protection of less than 1.5 kV. Part numbers can be selected from the chart depending on whether it's a single phase or three phase installation and whether the installation is less than or greater than 10 metres from the MEN link. 
If your building does not have external lightning protection, the next question is does the building have overhead supply or in a region with greater than 2.2 lightning flashes per square kilometre per year? Now these stats can be looked up on the Bureau of Meteorology website. If this is the case, then any lightning strike is likely to be at a greater distance, therefore less energy will be entering your installation. In this case, we can use a surge prediction device with an impulsional current of 12.5 kA. Here, NHP have the PSC 12.5 kA. Again, part numbers are selected depending if it's a three phase or a single phase installation and that uh, distance from the MEN link. It's worth noting here that there's no problem with upgrading to the 25 kA unit. Uh, this may be relevant if you've got a particularly sensitive, vulnerable or expensive installation. If that's not the case, then it's assumed that no energy from a lightning strike will directly enter your supply. Therefore, you can go to straight to a Type 2 device. Here, NHP has the PSM40KA range, part number selected as previous. You'll note that in the parameters, there is no IMP for this device because it's a pure Type 2. Uh, it has an IMAX of 40KA, a nominal current of 20KA, and a protection level of less than 1.3 kV. So that covers the first stage of protection in our main switchboards. However, it's always recommended to have a second stage of protection in our distribution boards. This is to protect from residual surges coming from our main installation, as well as surges being induced on the cable between the main switchboard and the distribution boards, as well as any surges coming from switching of our loads. In this case, the PSM 40KA Type 2 device can be used as well. For any particularly sensitive electrical equipment, there is a range of final stage surge protection devices available. These are installed as close as possible to the sensitive equipment to catch up the remnants of any surges on your network. The selection guide and other details on surge protection can be found in NHP's surge protection brochure. This concludes today's NTU module on surge protection devices. Hopefully you now feel confident when dealing with these products. Remember, if you do need any additional help in the selection process, you can contact your local NHP representative for assistance, or simply visit the NHP website. Thanks for watching.